there's still some technical problems they are trying to fix, so I would be ready. Let's let us start. So. Yeah. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to a very interesting talk about uh, a thing that we all probably wanted once in a life, right? We have Christoph Berg from Cybertech. Let's yeah. give him a round of applause. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, hello. I'm a senior personal engineer at Cybertech. Um, I'm also a Debian developer doing all things Postgres in Debian. And on the Postgres side, um, I'm a major contributor doing all things Debian in Postgres. So that's kind of the same thing on both sides. And yeah, let's get into the talk. So suppose we have an address book and we want to delete some entry there, delete from address book where some name is someone we wanted to remove from there and then suddenly there's two records deleted. We wanted to delete one and then we have to do something about it. So in an ideal world, we would have used a transaction that we could just roll back. So begin, delete from table, okay, the wrong thing happened, just roll, back, roll it back. So if we didn't do that, we could probably restore from backup, but that needs that we have backups, we should probably be testing backups, I should know how point in time recovery works. So in an in ideal world, I would have that, but let's see what happens if we don't. Postgres has this system called multi-version concurrency control, MVCC, and basically that means that delete just deletes, um, just marks the data as deleted. It doesn't actually delete it. So um, if we want to get back the rows from the table, in theory it's still there, but the question then is how do we get at it? So, that's the outline of the talk. Um, we are shortly looking at how Postgres stores um, data in tables. Then we will see how we can get into um, the data, the deleted data that is still present inside the tables. Then there's something called auto vacuum that um, actually removes data from tables. And if it's not, not in the tables anymore, we can see how we can get um, in, uh, at the data that is st still present in the transaction log. Okay, so to put it very briefly, um, MVCC works by having extra system columns on each table. Um, so you can actually select them. So if you say select x min, x max, comma star from address book, we can not only see the data that is inside the table, but we can also see um, x min and x max which means um, xmin is the transaction number that was inserting that row, and the short version is that xmax is the transaction that actually deleted the row. So in that example, both rows are still there. They have xmin set, and xmax is still zero, which means the row is still visible. Now, if we actually delete the row, um, we can actually see that the xmax value is appearing. So if we open two sessions in Postgres in parallel, in the first one we open a transaction, delete one row, don't commit it yet, and if you look at the table in a sec second session at the same time, you can actually see that this x max value has been set. So you can actually see that this row is being deleted. Um, of course it's not deleted yet because we didn't um, commit the transaction yet, but that's how uh, Postgres actually stores the information about um, which rows are visible and which not. 
So the basic idea would be to get the data back, we just look at everything that, ha that has Xmax set to 2840. But of course, um, so we, we can actually do that. We can look, read everything from the table that has the Xmax value set. Um, but as soon as the transaction that is deleting that row is committing, um, the row is just gan gone. We can still try to read everything where the Xmax value is not zero, um, but Postgres will just not show the row because it has been deleted. So yeah, what, what do we do about that? Um, we know the row is, just th is still there, and yeah, let's see how we can actually get at the data that we just deleted. So this is where PG Dirty Read comes into play. PG Dirty Read is an um, extension that I'm maintaining on um, GitHub. Um, as, and as the name says, it's implementing some sort of dirty reads for Postgres. Um, that means um, by using that extension, we should be able to see the rows that are still stored in the table, but that um, stock Postgres doesn't want to show us. So installing it is quite simple. Um, you can either con compile it as a, a standard extension or install it from, from packages. Um, so we install the extension on disk. We tell the system to create extension PG Dirty Read. Um, and actually, the ex um, extension is very simple. It just contains a single function, also called per PG Dirty Read. And um, we're going to use that function to look at the table. So the very simple version would be we just try to select star from PG Dirty Read and we give it the table name to um, output everything. Unfortunately, it's not that simple um, because this function is um, returning um, an untyped record. Uh, we need to actually tell SQL about um, the structure of that record. So the error is a column definition list is required for functions returning this record type. So the actual invocation is a bit more complicated. Um, we need to give it a table definition. So the actual invocation is select star from PG Dirty Read, address book, and then we um, give it a table definition here. Um, we can put a table alias here, which doesn't matter in this example. Um, then we have um, the name column, which is of type text, and we have the address column, which is also of type text. And if we do that, we actually get the data back. So this um, Heinz Erhard column has actually been marked as deleted in the, in the system, and um, yeah, PG Dirty Read will actually show it again. Okay, um, having to specify um, this column definition list might be a bit cumbersome, um, but it can also be used um, as an advantage um, for example, you can actually select less columns. If you're not interested in everything, you can just give it less columns here and it will just return less um, data. Um, and um, PG Dirty Read also allows to um, read the uh, hidden system columns from um, the original table. So if you just include uh, Xmin, Xmax, with, these, uh, with this special XID data type, uh, in this column definition list um, and select it from PG Dirty Read, um, it will actually show you this, um, the original values um, from the table. There's also a special column called debt, um, which, which is just a Boolean, which is um, saying that the column has really, or this row has really been deleted. And for example, we could use this debt value to actually retrieve um, this single row from that table just by including it in the in the select value. So we can just say select name and address from PG Dirty Read on the address book table, give it this column definition list and say where dead, and then it will just output the data that has been deleted from the table. So that would be the most simple way to actually get the rows back from the from the table that were deleted by this delete command. Yeah, finally we can just put it back into, it, uh, into the original table, insert into address book, select, and so on. And um, yeah, finally, if we execute this command, um, the data is actually back in the original table. 
whether you want to write to the original table or use a temporary table and so on uh, is a different question, but in, in this example, um, this would actually give you the data back. Okay, that was the very simple version of that. Um, if you have several rows um, that were deleted um, or you have several commands that you want um, to restore, you could identify the um, rows by looking at this precise x max value if that, this dead column isn't accurate, accurate enough. Um, if you're writing directly into the original table that you're restoring from, you might actually get into a version of this Halloween problem that you're reading everything that has been marked as deleted and because dirty read can uh, everything, you will be uh, also seeing the data that you're just restoring and getting into an infinite loop. Um, so maybe um, putting things in a separate um, table makes handling everything easier, but uh, in this si simple example, it worked because we used this special um, debt marker. Um, also, if any of the data that is involved there has been toasted, um, things might get interesting um, because the toast tables are handled separately. Um, PG Dirty Read does handle uh, toast a bit, but it's not handling all the cases out there yet. Um, perhaps that could be improved in the future. Um, an entirely other approach uh, solving the same problem would be using PG file dump, um, which just reads the um, data files on disk, um, which you can also um, fetch as a GitHub module, um, which is basically doing the same as PG Dirty Read, um, but not from inside Postgres, but reading directly from the file system. So if you have any Postgres data files, uh, you can uh, use PG file dump to um, inspect those files on disk. And PG file dump recently has learned about actually decoding data. Um, PG file dump has been around for decades, but uh, so far it only um, read metadata from the pages. Um, new versions can actually also read and decode the data. It doesn't it's, and understand all data types, but the most simple ones like uh, integers and, and text values are included. Okay, so that's how we can actually get at data that is still present in the tables, but there's this thing called vacuum, uh, which is PostgreSQL's garbage collection. So um, at some point, rows that have been marked for deletion need to be uh, removed, so the space will be reclaimed. Um, you can either run it manually on a table, or um, there's this auto vacuum um, daemon, which is launching, or which is waking up every minute, and then deleting um, data from tables that have been changed enough. Changed enough means that as soon as 50 rows plus 20% of the table size have been changed, Autovit Vacuum will jump in and remove everything from, um, from the tables, so from disk. So that means um, when deleting too many things and crossing this threshold, um, you have less than a minute to avoid auto vacuum and removing everything if you want to retrieve it again. Um, usually that doesn't work. So if you shut down the system immediately, you might have some chance uh, getting PG Dirty Read to uh, get your rows back, but that's usually not going to happen because it takes longer than a minute to notice. And maybe you only have one second because auto vacuum just wakes up at that point. So let's see what we can do there. Um, Postgres has this thing called wall, where it um, stores um, records of everything that is being changed on disk. So maybe we can get the changed data from there. Um, but essentially, the wall is all binary, and it doesn't contain any readable data. It just has uh, change records of the form delete item four on page zero or something like that. 
So it will probably be a bit, bit more complicated, but let's see what we can do. So um, constructing an example again, um, we select from the address book again to see what's in there. Um, now I've selected a different um, system column here called the uh, tuple identifier. Um, and, and in this example, we can also see that we have on page zero, we have item four, um, this Heinz Erhard record. Um, so this is the one we are going to delete. Um, yeah, we're just deleting it from, um, from, the, from the database now. We actually vacuum the address book, so the table has already been cleaned, so we need to get the data back from elsewhere. Um, and we can ask Postgres about which wall file it's writing to currently. So this is the actual file name um, we are going to look at now. Um, so Postgres ships a utility p called PG Wall Dump. PG Wall Dump is built into Postgres as part of uh, post, um, Postgres Contrib. And you can just put, uh, hand it a wall file name and it will print out lots of information. And from this file, I've um, shown the two records that are of interest now. Um, we have one resource manager heap message, which is a delete. And in this case, it's actually deleting from block zero, the item number four. So this is the record that is actually deleting um, this, um, this row. And we have a second uh, record here um, from this heap two resource manager, which is actually vac vacuuming um, the row. So uh, after this record, um, the row is really gone from, um, from the system. So now the question is, where do we actually get our data back? So the delete record itself does not say, please delete the Heinz Erhard record. It just says um, deleting um, the item number four on this page. But on closer inspection, we can see that we have this FPW flag on this record. And this is the magic bit that will actually save our data here. So what's FPW? Um, FPW means full page write. Um, a full page write is something that Postgres does um, each time you're touching a, a page for the first time. Um, and for the first time means actually um, after the last checkpoint. So each time a page um, in memory gets changed, um, Postgres will be writing out the whole page into the transaction log. So we have a full copy of the block that is being changed at the moment, and that's written to the transaction log. So um, the full copy includes the actual data that's being part of the row. So it will have uh, the name and the address of the person that just got deleted. Um, so there might be some chance that we actually get the data back from there. So um, our deleted row is in there. Um, the row will already have been marked for deletion, um, but whatever, let's just um, retrieve it from there. So the good news is that um, we can actually make that work. So the plan would be, um, let's get the full page rights out of the wall, um, create a table with the correct, correct structure, just put all the table, just put all the pages that have been touched by any of those commands into that table, and then call it dirty read again. Okay, so the good news is that PG wall dump uh, has grown a new switch in Postgres 16, um, which is called save pull, full page. And if you hand it that switch, it will um, dump all the full page images that it can find to um, new files on disk. You just give it a directory and it will write lots and lots of files. So in the example I was doing here, um, it, it wasn't just creating six files, it, it was more like hundreds. Um, so, um, so what I did not say, let me switch back a, uh, just a second here. 
Um, if we look here, we can see that the um, table we are deleting from is actually um, identified internally by this number 64,076. And if we are looking at the list of full page rights it was doing, um, there's actually one um, mention of that page, uh, of that table number here. So this um, file here with this very long file name um, is actually the one we are looking for. So um, there's, you can actually make sense from all the, those numbers, but the interesting one is the um, table name, number here. Okay, so we have um, this full page right here. Um, there might be several. Um, we just take that one here. And the plan is now um, we create a new table with the correct structure. So we could just type the structure, but um, there's this nice feature where you can say create table, address book restore, and then you just say like address book, and it will copy all the um, columns from the original table. You could also say including indexes, including constraints, including everything else, but um, I'm int only interested in the structure, so just like address book. Um, then we need to see um, how Postgres identified this table. Um, so the original table was, was this um, 6476 one, and the one I'm, I created now is 6483. So the plan is to stuff our, all our full page rights that we collected from um, the wall into this new file. Um, if we look at the table now, it's still empty because we didn't put anything there. So um, this base 6483 file is still empty. So yeah, let's just take um, the full page rights we got from the wall and just put it into that file. Um, if you're not really sure what you're doing there, it's probably better to stop Postgres before doing that. Um, so you're not reading from any cache data or something. In this example, it works because the table is still, still empty, but stopping and start, uh, starting again is easy enough. Um, if you have several full page images there, just cat them together, cat something star something, and put everything into, the, in, into that file. Okay, then we can actually start Postgres again. Um, if we just look at this restored table, it will not contain anything because uh, it will not contain the row we are looking for because uh, remember I said the wall has already marked the, uh, the row for deletion, so it's still deleted, um, but uh, AutoVacuum hasn't removed it yet, so we can actually look at it. And in fact, if we really use PG Dirty Read now to look at that table now, um, we can actually get the data back from there. So. Um, we first used PG wall dump to put the files, uh, to extract the full page images into separate files, collected all those files in a single table, and then PG Dirty Read can actually extract the data again. Okay, um, so this was an easy example. In practice, it will, it will probably be more complicated. Um, it works best uh, when delete was the first change to this page because then it's easy or easy to actually find uh, the wall records that correspond to that delete. Um, one problem is that you need to identify the transaction number first, um, which is usually not noted anywhere, but um, looking at PG wall dump output might give some hints what happened there. Um, of course, this is much more complicated if there's concurrent activity on the table that can interfere in all sorts of ways by making it less obvious what to look for. Um, if the delete command is deleting several rows, only the first one will actually have the X, X max marking, um, which means that um, you can't easily identify everything by X max. Um, so 
it might be hard to tell actual deleted and live tuples apart. Um, so there's some sorting to do, um, but at least if this is the only thing where you can get your data back, this is of course still better than nothing. Okay, to, to summarize, PG Dirty Read can help in some cases, in some harder cases, um, you can actually resort to PG Wall Dump. Um, I've actually done that, that for a customer earlier this year. That's uh, what the talk is coming for. In, in that case, we were actually lucky that the case was very clean, no interference from, from other commands, but I, I think if you have concurrent transactions running on the same table, writing and updating things, um, getting the right set of uh, full page images is probably going to be hard, but um, yeah, the, the real fix to this is just um, to have proper backups and really test them from time to time to make sure that you don't have to get into that, dis um, that situation. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have time for some questions. A quick question. When you're using PG Dirty Read, rather than uh, defining the table as a row like that, can you use the table row type? Like table name, percent, row type? Uh, I think row type only exists in PHGSQL, not in SQL. Right. OK. Yeah, but that would help, yes. Yeah, OK. Hi, um, I'm just wondering what happens if there's DDL changes on the table or any table structure, how w w can this still be used or is that, is that a limitation? Um, that won't hurt at all because the existing data is not changed by um, DDL. So the, the, the existing rows still have their own structure. And you can, even if you're dropping t uh, columns, you can still refer to the old columns. And in, in fact, PG, PG Dirty Read can even read uh, dropped columns again okay. Okay, because the great. data is still there. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, can you briefly explain how PG Dirty Read works under the hood? Um, it just passes uh, the proper flag to heaps can table something, he begins can, and just reads everything. So internally, it's totally trivial. It's just reading the table and ignoring any uh, read committed, read rep repeated reads, whatever flags. So it's basically doing some SQL queries. It's, it's using the Postgres uh, table scan IPA internally that is also re used for reading from tables. It's just not passing any isolation level flags. So the, the main loop is just a few lines or just one call to the Postgres function that is already there. The actual magic in there is to make it work uh, using the system columns. There's some trickery to make it work with X-min and, and so on, but the core is just invoking the table scan. Would it make sense to restore the data into another small cluster you just set up in order to avoid having to shut down the current cluster? So, you, well, you, you can also always do that on a replica and, or, mm -hmm. or on a standby or, okay. or even pull it from some backup. That would probably also work, yeah. That okay, is. thanks. We have one here. So, um, PG Wall Dump, you mentioned that uh, since version 16 is able to use the full, uh, uh, save the, saving the full page. Uh, can you use that for uh, processing walls from a previous version? Uh, no, you can't, but actually backpatching that uh, change uh, isn't all that hard. So, it's just adding one function to extract stuff. I've actually done the backport for Postgres 15. And it's probably not that hard to make it work for older versions as well. So what's, a, what's about the um, toast tables? You have to go through these uh, individually That's again. Fair. That makes things more complicated. <laughs> 
So the, those get vacuumed individually, so data might appear, disappear from there in other ways. And um, since Postgres doesn't expect you to get data back that way, you might get all, the, all sorts of toast errors pointing at invalid stuff that that's not included here yet. But if you have that case, that's going to be more involved. So there was one question in the back who was... Okay. Hello. I was wondering, like, what is the procedure, for example, when I make, uh, I do have enabled auto commit, I do make some delete that I want to erase, and I, like, immediately know that something's wrong. So maybe if I shut down the, uh, maybe if I disable the auto vacuum on the table, shut down the database, install the extension, something like this? Yeah. So if you, um, if you're fast enough to shut down um, before auto vacuum is hitting, or maybe you didn't delete that much data, so the data is still there. Um, then just install PG Dirty Read and uh, read data from there. And if vacuum hits, you will have to go through the wall, and then it gets complicated. The question is here. Uh, thank you. Uh, just to add up on that uh, question, because it is relevant. Uh, do you mention the auto vacuum in general? Or, for example, we may have tables that we have tweaked the configuration to auto vacuum every 10 minutes, for example. What about a case like this? I mean, this wouldn't be easier, let's say, that uh, you delete something, you find out after five minutes, but the auto vacuum for this specific table hasn't uh, been yet uh, triggered. If you tweak auto vacuum to run slower or faster, it it's, will uh, just increase or lessen the window in which you can go the first route. Okay, and uh, regarding the toast tables, uh, I think that the same may be applied also if you have blob objects, right, that are written on a PG uh, large data table or something. Have you considered something about this? Large objects mm. I haven't considered yet, but mm. those are stored in a table, so you could use the same just, machinery yes, there. Yes, that's in yes. PG large object, mm. and then it just has a reference. Do the okay. same, and it's just more internal knowledge mm. about how the columns are named. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Are there any other questions? Okay, then thank you, Christoph. And thank you.